Okay, so let's talk about Agatha, the Elite Four Agatha, the same one that I've brought up before. I always thought she was an interesting woman, just from like her her past, you know. We've always we we never really seen who she was, but there was there actually was information given, and they actually did explain this. I think it was like Pokemon Masters or something, not not the board game, but it was like Pokemon Masters GX or something like that. Uh, I don't know if it was like a game or it was a was it part of like an anime or something. I, I mean, I'd I'd have to double check, but basically. You know, even though the games are a little bit different than the anime or, you know, in a different universe, it's like at the same time, though, some things are still canon, it seems like. So it's kind of like they do cross over, but at the same time, not 100%, though. So Agatha, okay, so this is what we know about Agatha and the prototype, um, from what I understand, at least. Agatha never used ghost-type Pokemon or poison types ghost and poison she always used she kind of used like the same kind of pokemon professor oak would sort of use not not necessarily as far as like in the games but but um you know because Prof professor oak and her always got along but at the same time though they didn't and i'll explain that very shortly so but basically in the prototype though she used uh she used all three eevees a tauros and I'm trying to remember what the last one was it was definitely something that it, it was kind of like what Professor Oak had his hands on. You know, she was definitely, you know, because they took after one another. Basically, they they had their own reasons for doing what they did, and but at the same time, though, once Professor Oak Professor Oak knew Agatha when they were children, and she mentions this a lot because you know she notices that you know oh hey you know you're uh, on a quest by Professor Oak so. And she mentions how, you know, Professor Oak used to be, like, back in the day, he used to be, like, a formidable trainer. And, I mean, we never got a chance to see, like, what kind of trainer Professor Oak was. But, you know, eventually, we we were supposed to at some point, though. So, but they cut all this stuff out of the, at the last second because the games were, ran out of cartridge space. But anyways, this is what we know, though. So, when Pokemon was first created... Agatha, way back in the day, like way back in their, you know, even before Pokemon Red, I mean, maybe like 50, 60 something years. It depends on how old they are. I, I don't know how old Professor Oak is. I think he's in his 60s. It looks like maybe his 50s. But it, it's definitely like, you know, take that and minus like maybe 10, 15 years before Red and Green go on their own adventure. Um, so basically, when they were kids, they were basically like trainers. Professor Oak was a very intelligent individual. Um, before he became a Pokemon professor, he basically kind of, like, he was that trainer at one point. Like, he, he, um, who knows what the Elite Four was like at the time, but basically he knew his Pokemon. He, he, uh, knew different areas, he traveled, um, and then he just basically went off to become a pro Pokemon professor because he he'd seen a lot of stuff. So base and, and and this confirms also at the same time though the Pokemon Pokedex theory. Like every professor at one point probably did complete it, but they wanted somebody else to go on that adventure and fulfill it themselves too. Because again, you know, because like Professor Oak created the Pokedex in the Kano region. But what's really interesting though is how did they get that information to begin with? They probably got it from somewhere else. So they probably themselves had that information. So it's very possible that maybe Professor Oak and as well as, um, like, you know, Red, because Red's like one of the closest that we know that did get to completing the original Dexter, that, um, you know, maybe Professor Oak even knew who Mew was at that time. Or Arcsaurus. And, you know, all these Pokemon that, you know, they have like this lost history, but... There, there's like this information that's eventually updated. I guess, I guess it really depends up until what point you want to add. Like who's really recording these logs and then eventually the information's like restored in the Dexter. But it's really interesting though. Like, you know, did Professor Oak actually know about Mew at one point? Was he one of the very few people that actually got a chance to even catch it? You know, who knows? Who really knows? Um, it's very interesting actually when you think about it. Um... But anyway, so Agatha was a woman that, you know, at, at, at first she, you know, she wanted to be left alone. Professor Oak was, like, obviously always the very, very, very friendly, very outspoken individual, wanted to be friends with everybody. And so Agatha was the kind of woman that, you know, she wanted to be left alone at first, you know, maybe because she was just a, you know, 
just just uh, kind of lost in her own thoughts and all that. But she always knew, but she was always that kind of woman that, you know, you could just stare into her soul, sort of, but, like, she'd stare back even harder. And she would know. She would, because, you know, it's like she kind of, like, kind of like Sabrina. Like, you know, she, like, but the idea is, like, rather than having psychic powers, she could, like, see, like, feel, like, she could sense the dark world and all that. She's It was kind of like a Wiccan, rather, but, like, not always, though. But she had that, that, that feel, like, that intimidation. You know, in the Elite Four, she was, she, she would so basically what happened was Professor Oak and Agatha would fight each other every now and again. Now, obviously, Professor Oak beat her, and she wanted to beat him in the, in the sense that, you know, maybe that would just eventually leave him alone. But because Professor Oak would always win, she kept coming back. So, again, that reverse psychology. And she, you know, she never, she eventually started to grow fond of their relationship. To the point where they were, you know, best friends, basically, sort of. And then, but at the same time, though, eventually Professor Oak started, started wanting to not fight her anymore. Because then he started wanting to focus on other things. Because, again, then he started becoming, like, a Pokemon professor over the years. And then he eventually go create the Pokedex. And Agatha would, you know, because she's a strong trainer, too, ended up becoming, like, a member of the Elite Four. Hoping that maybe one day she could maybe find some other connection with somebody else. Or maybe just find something to kill some time with, you know. You, you can get where I'm getting at with this. But it's, um, so basically she ended up becoming a, um, because they scrapped a lot of stuff in the original games, uh, like her team, for example, you know, she's, they, they basically decided to make her a Wiccan sort of like, cause it, it, it made sense, you know, she's like this very strong, um, poison and, and a ghost type, you know, and again, if you have psychic types easily, you easily can take them out very easily. Like, uh, like, uh. What was it? What was it? Uh, Gengar, Gengar, um, uh, Golbat, um, two uh, Haunter, another Gengar, and I think an Arbok was what she had in the final version of the games. But at one point, it was basically again she had three EV evolutions, a Tauros, and I don't remember what the last one was. I still don't remember. Um, I have it on this channel. I, you know, very interesting, but it's um. But it does make me think, though, you know, if she had all those Pokemon, then she must have, at the same time, though, you know, Professor Oak must have taught her a lot, too. And she must have learned a lot, too, because, you know, she ventured out and raised a very powerful team. And, you know, obviously a very well-spoken individual for, you know, a senior citizen, for somebody her age, still alive, still influencing people. And... And so it's like, you know, if you think about it, you know, th there's not too many trainers that actually managed to beat her either. They're, I mean, Henson, that's why she's in the Elite Four. But it's like, um, you know, like I think, though, you know, she, the only trainers that I could think of, because you think about it, when you're in the Elite Four, depending on how high up you are, the stronger you are. So there's only one trainer, well, aside from the champion, there's only one other trainer than the Elite Four that was actually higher than she was, because she was the third member of the Elite Four. You know, you had Lorelei, then you had Bruno, then you had um, Agatha, and then finally Lance, the Dragon Master. So, obviously, Lance was able to kick her ass, but, you know, but Lance was already strong. Like, you know, his dragon types were always, like, you know, he had that much confidence that he could always win, but, you know, the, there was only, like, but the only way to really take Lance out was with either brute force, which sort of took a while and a lot of healing items, or you use ice types, and if you hit him, or an electricity, depending on which Pokemon you use, if you had the right abilities, he goes down really fast, you know, because it's really, you know, Dragonites were always a hard thing to kill, but, you know, you, you basically can see, like, Dragonite was, if it didn't have, like, Mega Flare and Hyper Beam, Mega Fire, because, um, again, Mega Fire was kind of cut from the original games, you could really see where they got the concept for it. But if they would have had some of those ideas, Lance would have been even harder, man, to even fight. But it would have been, like, it's interesting. And then you had, like, in Gen 2, like, a couple years later, like, if he was still, like, because he's the champion still. So, even though Red technically was, but because they had a fill in the Elite Four, Red was not there. So, Lance took over the position again. And, you know, a couple members left, and they replaced him with somebody else. But it's, like, interesting to think, though, that, uh, you know... That's what's really crazy about the Elite Four. You had tons and tons of Pokemon that were just, like, they were all over the place. Like, the different typings, the different, uh, but, you know, and even Lance, though, he still had his Dragonites and all that. 
and well, Beluga and uh, Cryothin were cut. So imagine if he had Water Dragon types, that would have been interesting. And it would have been a really good balancer too, because Water types are not super effective against Dragon types. So it would have been like normal damage, I guess. But you know, would Electric types still be super effective against Dragon types then? Because Dragon types are like resistant to elements, except for Ice. And then you had um, Water types that are super effective. So it would be like times two times 0.5, which goes down to 1.0. And therefore, you know, at normal damage. So basically, I mean, you know, you'd still find your way. You'd still fight your way through the Elite Four. You'd still be able to beat those dragons. But, you know, electric types of... And then, like, times... You'd have, like, a times four... I think Gyarados in Gen 1 was a, was a dragon and a water type. And then later they changed it to a flying and a water type. So electricity is, like, times four instant death for Gyarados. Nearly. Unless you have, like, bad stats. But, I mean, even then, like... I mean, I'd say, like, a Raichu... Even a Raichu with just Thunderbolt could probably annihilate a Gyarados. But it's, um... Very interesting, actually, indeed. Like, you know... You, you know, you get stuck on some trainers because, like, you know, maybe, like, the typings are wrong. But if you know how to play Pokemon in a strategic way, it really isn't that hard now, is it? <laughs> you know? But it's, uh... No, always knowing, like, your opponent, though. Lance is a dragon type, so it's like, okay, so what are you going to use against dragons? Obviously, ice and dragon types. But anyways, I, I think it's really interesting, though, how they uh, how Generation 1 really just kind of struggled a little bit, and there was a lot of lost history with it. You know, Agatha, who knows what happened to Agatha afterwards? She's probably still alive, she's just not in the Elite Four anymore. She's probably like somewhere, though, somewhere... Uh, Probably adventuring, trying to find me, like the re living the rest of her life, and uh, you know, trying to find meaning behind it. And then there was uh, what was another Pokemon that was really interesting? Uh, was it Pikachu? No, not Pikachu. Uh, so yeah, Professor Oak would go off to do that, and like you know, but then the concept would be like you'd fight him again, like later on, you would actually get a chance to fight Professor Oak, and I mean, you'd see like you know, you had you had some crazy Pokemon like Gyarados, Tauros. Uh, whatever starter you didn't, you and your rival left behind, Arcanine, and, and then, uh, what was the other one, was there another one? It's, it, like, it's crazy, man, but it's like, you know, he, he's a strong trainer, though, a very strong trainer, and that would have been pretty cool to see how, how that would have worked out. I mean, it makes sense because you know, if you're if you're a Pokemon professor, especially in in the in the generation that you're in, I mean, it would only make sense that you know he had strong Pokemon because he was trying to, you know, because as far as Pokemon goes, you know, he was trying to pass off the idea that he was very powerful and very strong. Therefore, everything that you know, because again, you know, you think about it when you're when you're a Pokemon professor, you you spend a lot of time researching stuff, so you're always learning new things. So it only made sense that, you know, maybe Professor Oak, not only was he intelligent, but he's seen this stuff before. He went on an adventure. He lived a long time. He was probably one of the smartest individuals in the entire Pokemon series, without a doubt. And I mean, and this is even before you even consider, like, the other Pokemon professors as well. I mean, no wonder, like, someone like Green, you know, like his grandson, for example, wanted to go on his own adventure along with Red. And, you know, Green actually made it past the Elite Four, too. And, you know, and then there was that one, you know, because he, you know, Red lost his first fight against, uh, against Green. But at one point, though, and it's debatable at what point, though, you know, Red eventually got so good that nobody could beat him because he wanted to be the best. You know, he got sick of losing, but he didn't. But at some point, he got immune to fear, and he just, like, now he was, like, coming back with a vengeance to the point where he surpassed, like, everybody he came across to the point where very rarely did he ever lose. And, you know, it, it just, it, it's amazing what, and I think that's what the Pokemon magic of the series was with Gen 1. You were that trainer. You were that individual that went on the adventure, got all the badges, went across the Johto region and the Hoenn region, and the, and, or not, not until, like, the later generations, but, like, you, you know what I mean, the Kano region. And then you got all eight badges, you went through the Elite Four, you know, you're hearing all these trainers talk about how, like, only so many people make it this far. He's like, you beat the Elite Four? He's like, don't make me laugh. And then it's like, you know, but you eventually did, you know, you just kept going and going and eventually you found yourself at that one place that was, you know, intimidating to stare fear in the people, the best trainers in the league. So who are we up against, you know? 
and then eventually you find your rivals the very the last one and just before you know he's I, I don't know was he like a champion for like a few hours but the very next challenger he has was his rival and he's sitting there talking about how you know this is going to be good for his history you know because you know once he beats him he'll basically put him aside and be the best trainer even better than he already is and then and then greed ends up talking all this history but then he ends up losing the red so is like he's like all like at a loss for words that his whole champion regime is already over with <laughs> Because somebody was better than him, finally. You know, and then... That's that's just what was crazy about Pokemon. You know? Just all the character development, all the characters in it, and all the Pokemon. And it really made you just wonder, you know, what did we miss growing up? Like, prototype data, and and just how many different ideas they might have had that we just overlooked. You know, I, I really would like to know. Because Satoshi Tajiri, I tell you what, man. The man had a huge envision. As well as the other people that helped him out. Because I always forget their names but people like Shigeru Miyamoto you know for believing in them uh convincing the elders and the higher ups at Nintendo of Japan that they shouldn't give up on them and here we are with our own series of Pokemon that lived on for years even years to come you know I still think they will make a generation nine I do believe that the series will keep going and who knows how much longer that'll last, but, you know, I'm sure people will still keep making their own Pokemon ROMs, though. There's so many of them out there. It's nuts. But, you know, but, yeah, but let's, but like I said before, let's keep talking about the official Pokemon data, and if anything else comes up, I will definitely make a video about it. So, hopefully, this is, like, something you kind of learn something from it. You know, maybe you learn something from, like, Agatha's history, but, you know, but it, she is definitely an interesting individual, you know, somebody who's very strong, very powerful, and very mysterious, you know? But can you beat her, though? You know? And I and be like, yeah. You know, if you have Psychic-type Pokemon and Ice-type, you could definitely take her out very easily. But, you know, but that's the thing about Gengar. Gengar's got a lot of speed and a lot of special attacks. So, what do you do? You know what I mean? So, the easiest way is, obviously, you know, get Psychic-type Pokemon that are really strong, like Kadabra or, you know, something that learns Psychic. Very easily you could take them out. But, yeah. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I if I find something else, I will definitely talk about it. I think I'm going to look into I think I'm going to look into Lance's character a little bit more cuz I want to know exactly how Lance became who he was. You know, how did he cuz you know, you take on the cuz another adversary of the of the uh, the Pokémon universe was always like the hardships you fall, all right? Okay, the Pokémon magic we keep mentioning and it's like you know, what made it what it was. So Lance was a trainer that was originally the strongest. You know, he had the confidence. He knew he had the experience. But could you beat him, though? Lance is never easy to beat. Because he's got all sorts of crazy tricks up his sleeve, as well as his cape, his appearance, his hairdo, his smile. And, you know, it just it just made you wonder, like, okay, Lance, what's what do you got in store for us? What 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 is Lance thinking? You know? It's uh, one of my favorite characters in the entire elite and the uh, history of Pokemon. You know, how did he become a dragon type trainer? And we know this because he came from a dragon, sort of, we knew he came from like a dragon clan. Even like, you know, he had followers, his elders, and, you know, because again, if you play the Johto region, you kind of get an understanding of like how he became who he was and why they entrusted him with such powerful Pokemon to begin with. But at the same time, though, uh, even in the prototype, he was actually supposed to be a lot stronger. Like, his Pokemon were in the level 60s, to the point where it would make sense that his Dragonites were actually supposed to be very well raised. So that explains why he did have level 60 Dragons, Dragonites and all that. And then he would obviously get other Dragons, too, because, you know, who else was a Dragon-type trainer that was even better than he was? Not counting, like, the players and all that in the game. Like, you know, like, other, like, NPC Pokemon trainers and all that. You know, what other trainers came close to raising dragons like Lance did? Not too many people. I still think, Red, I'll be honest with you, I still think Red, altogether, is like the best trainer in the entire series. Even if we don't see what Pokemon he's had, you know, he could catch legendaries. He could use them, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'll be honest, even when I was growing up, I always caught Articuno because, you know, Articuno was always a really good Pokemon to use against Lance. But at the same time, though... You know, there's other Ice-type Pokemon that were probably just as good, like Lapras and all that. 
because Lapras wasn't you know, like especially if you got like the, the shell block ability I believe is what it was the one where like you'd block critical attacks and all critical hits and all that so it was like you know Lance couldn't kill you with uh you could just kind of stare him down with uh a dragon type Pokemon, like with this dragon type Pokemon coming out for revenge, and you can just raise a Lapras, like a giant shield, <laughs> buy you some time while you're sitting here fighting this guy off. <laughs> it's it's really cool, actually, how that how that works. But again, yeah, again, like I said, I'll find more data and I'll talk about it. But again, subscribe if you're not, like this video. If you have any requests, let me know. But I'll do the best I can to find stuff. There's always something. But what are we going to talk about next? That's always the question.